The Battle of Alitus, a detailed account of the fate of the lost Soviet 5th Tank Division the first day of the war on the Eastern Front. The German Blitzkrieger was disrupted from the very first day of the war. Famous battles like the Red Army counterattacks in Rasieni, Scholli, Grodno, the resistance in the fortress of Brest and the huge battle of tanks of Brody or Durno are prime examples of this. But there was yet another battle that is rarely mentioned even by specialized historians. This was the Battle of Alitus in Lithuania, which we broadly covered in the first episodes of the Eastern Front. Professor of History Yezhov, PhD from the St. Petersburg State University, says that this battle is seldom mentioned in the literature, strange enough, since it was one of the first major battles of the beginning of the war. And also one of the first battles were Soviet tanks, ram German tanks. This division was formed in June of 1940 and it was stationed in the town of Alitus just four days before the battle, the 18th of June of 1941. Unlike many Soviet tank divisions, this was one of the strongest tank divisions, with its full complement of tanks, almost all of them operational. The previous year, in 1940, it was considered to be the best tank formation of the Red Army, when it was commanded by Polkovnik or Colonel Rotmistov, who would later be a Marshal of the Armed Forces. He even said, and I quote, The soldiers are infinitely loyal to the motherland and well trained. They had considerable practice in driving tanks and fired accurately with cannons and machine guns. End of quote. In June of 1941, the corps was commanded by General Mayor or Major General Alexei Vasilievich Kurkin, who would later personally lead a daring escape across enemy lines of the survivors of the Soviet disaster in the Battle of Rasieni, and would also fight in the famous Battle of Prohorovka in Kursk in 1943, and ended the war as General Polkovnik or Colonel General of the tank troops. The division itself was led by Polkovnik Fyodor Fyodorovich Fyodorov. It had up to 268 tanks and 76 armored vehicles, of which 50 were T-34 tanks, 30 were T-28 medium tanks, 170 BT-7 light fast tanks, and 18 T-26 light tanks. It also had 20 BA armored vehicles, 10 of each BA-10 and BA-20. It also had a howitzer regiment, an anti-aircraft battalion, and a pontoon bridge battalion. The 19th of June, Polkovnik Fyodorov received an encrypted message from the District Military Council. The division was put on alert, then left its places of usual deployment and took refuge in the forest. Some units were located several kilometers south of Alitus on the banks of the river Neman others in the forest on the eastern outskirts of the city. The 5th Motorized Rifle Regiment was located north of Alitus, also in the forest. The Howitzer Artillery Regiment left for summer camps near Aranye to the southeast. In the areas of concentration, the soldiers dug trenches, dugouts were built, and all equipment was carefully camouflaged. There were also units of the 29th Territorial Rifle Corps, formed from the Army of Independent Lithuania and the 184th Rifle Division. But despite the replacement of Lithuanian officers in all key positions with Soviet officers, these units were deemed unreliable and even hostile. A German soldier, Fritz Belka, wrote, and I quote, the Lithuanians armed with Russian guns are marching with delight next to our columns. The population at large gives us drinking water in buckets." End of quote. 22nd of June of 1941. General Hermann Hotz, 3rd Panzergruppe, attacked the Soviets at the junction of the Western and Baltic military districts. Four battalions of the 128th Division were attacked by two tank and two infantry divisions of the Wehrmacht. The Soviet division was cut into pieces and in spite of fierce resistance, it routed. 
Many officers died and the commander was captured. This was General Mayor Alexander Semyonovich Zotov, who spent the rest of the war in German prison camps. He organized a failed escape and survived both the Nazi prisons and later the NKVD interrogators, with a full reinstatement in the Red Army after the war. There was no unified command, control and coordination and all the Soviet units rushed to the bridges across the river Neman, being overtaken by the German panzer columns moving along the highway. After the defeat of the Soviet units located on the border, the 7th, 12th and 20th Panzer Divisions rushed to the river Neman at maximum speed in order to seize the crossings. At 0420 hours, the first air raid was made on the city of Alitus, but the 5th Tank Division suffered almost no damage. The anti-aircraft division fired at the German planes. But soon the gunners switched to firing on the German panzers approaching the city along the two roads. The division commander managed to send one motorized rifle battalion, reinforced by artillery to help the anti-aircraft battalion. The anti-aircraft gunners knocked out 14 tanks and 16 vehicles from a distance of up to 200 to 300 meters. In only 30 to 40 minutes, the Germans suppressed the Soviet artillery with counter-artillery fire, destroyed the Soviet tanks located on the left bank of the river and afterwards captured both the southern bridge and the northern bridge. Fierce tank battles took place near the bridges, on the streets of the city, in its squares and in its parks. The 2nd Battalion of the 9th Regiment in BT-7 light tanks supported by 24 3 turret T-28 medium tanks from the 1st Battalion attacked the German bridgehead. In this battle, the Soviets, led by Starshi Lieutenant Brzezvitsky, destroyed at least 5 German vehicles on the right bank of the river as they simply rammed them and pushed them into ditches and then rushed across the bridge to the left bank of the river. But according to a Soviet report, I quote, But as soon as we crossed the bridge, we met a group of German tanks, one of which immediately caught fire, and then our tank caught fire. Later, I saw only fire, smoke, then heard the roar of explosions and the clang of metal. End of quote. The fighting in the city and its southern outskirts continued all day and the Luftwaffe bumped and strafed the Soviet units throughout the extremely long day of the 22nd of June. Luftwaffe bombers, one after another, destroyed Soviet tanks and armored vehicles. Red Army reports estimate that the Luftwaffe accounted for at least 30 to 40 percent of all equipment lost during the combat. Up to 90 Soviet combat vehicles were lost in the field of battle. With the onset of darkness, the remnants of the defenders of the western part of Alitus broke through the captured bridge to the eastern bank of the river, and at about 2300 hours, the battle stopped at the southern bridge. According to the memoirs of the commander of the German 25th Panzer Regiment, a former exile Russian Count Arlov, I quote, when two dozen German panzers crossed the bridge in Alidus, one tank was destroyed by a T-34 tank, which managed to escape despite the fire of 37mm guns from the rest of the German tanks, whose rounds could not penetrate at all the T-34's armor." End of quote. To the south of Alidus, beyond the river Neman, Soviet artillery put six more German tanks out of action. This was followed by a counterattack by Soviet tanks. 15 of which were knocked out. Also, more than 70 Soviet tanks were destroyed in the course of subsequent counterattacks carried out by a large number of Soviet tanks, with the support of infantry, air attack, and artillery. According to Count Arlov, the tank battle of Alitus was the most fierce of all in which the 7th Panzer Division of the Wehrmacht participated up to that date. 23rd of June of 1941. In the early morning of the 23rd of June, the Soviet 5th Tank Division was completely defeated by the German spearheads, the 20th Panzer Division in the north and the 7th Panzer Division in the south. 
all the T-28 tanks were lost, and with almost no fuel, no ammunition, the 5th Tank Division retreated towards the city of Vilnius. There, Sergeant Grigory Nikolaevich Snydin, in a light BT-7 tank, waited hidden on the highway crossing in a swamp to ambush a column of 12 tanks and 10 anti-tank guns. With the first shot, Naiden hit the leading tank, then he hit the last tank in the column. Then the column was blocked on both sides as the BT-7 tank continued to shoot at them. In a matter of minutes, the Germans lost all 12 tanks and 10 guns disabled. Then a new group of tanks appeared, but upon seeing the burning vehicles, the Germans turned to another road. Naidin quickly changed his position to a new ambush and opened fire again. Having lost three vehicles, the Germans finally retreated. He disabled 15 tanks on a light BT-7 tank. Later in the war, Naidin was promoted to Polkovnik or Colonel and awarded the Gold Star Medal, the Order of the Red Star and the Order of Lenin. He was also made a hero of the Soviet Union. On the night of the 23rd of June, another German glider landed about 500 soldiers who captured the airfield in Aranje, which is today called Varena, and without a fight, captured up to seven armored vehicles and four guns. This event caused a complete Soviet tank regiment to divert its force in order to eliminate them, leaving only two of its tanks in the fight for Alitus. The Germans were finally dispersed, but this diversion tactic was successful. The front was broken, and the road to Vilnius in the north and to Minsk in the southeast was wide open. By the night of the 24th of June, the division only had 38 tanks left, and Vilnius had fallen to the Germans. One week later, only 15 tanks, mostly T-34s, 20 armored vehicles and 9 guns arrived at Maladechna in Belarus. According to Rodmistrov, 170 German tanks and armored vehicles were destroyed, according to Fyodorov, up to 300. The German official reports show only 11 tanks lost, and this huge difference in losses can be explained in a gross overestimation on the Soviet side, since both panzer divisions were fully operational in the following days, and also that many of these German losses were temporary and could be repaired in a few hours or days, where the Soviet losses were lost forever. The Soviet tank division was finally disbanded in July of 1941. General Oberst Hermann later wrote that the battle was exceptionally difficult. Please share, like and subscribe if you liked this episode. And if you didn't, well, thanks anyway for watching this far. Until next time. Thank you very much for watching.